start this morning in Luke's Gospel, Luke 22. These are the words of Jesus. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and also to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. So this passage actually comes within the context of Jesus and his disciples having what would be their last meal together. And during the course of the meal, the disciples have actually had a debate. They've had an argument with each other about who is the greatest. Kind of a remarkable thing to be debating on the eve of Jesus' crucifixion. But it shows that the disciples really had no idea. The fact that they were debating this idea about who was the greatest, it shows that they had no idea what was coming. They had no clue. And so Jesus says, guys, listen, you need to know, Satan wants to tear you to pieces. Satan's going to do work on you. But I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your strength. I'm praying for your faith. And Peter, Peter hears this, and Peter's not having any of it. Peter's like, Jesus, Jesus, I'm the one that walked on water, right? I'm the rock. That's me. Now, these other jokers, I can see how maybe they would fail you. I can see how maybe they would fall. But not me, Jesus. Not the rock. And Jesus says, Peter... Before the rooster even crows three times, you're going to deny that you even know me. Now forget for a second that Peter is a disciple. Peter is also Jesus' friend. Maybe even Jesus' best friend. And when your friend is in trouble, when your friend is at risk... One of the very worst ways that you can fail your friend is to claim that you don't even know him. And that's what Jesus says Peter is going to do. Later on in the same chapter, Luke 22, says, Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the, into the house of the high priest. Talking about Jesus here. This is Jesus being arrested. Peter followed at a distance, and when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord looked and turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and he wept bitterly. Have you ever failed? And I know that's a dumb question, okay? I've seen some of you guys trying to flirt in the cafeteria. I know that you've <laughs> failed, okay? <laughs> Probably a better question is, when is the last time that you failed, right? When's the last time that you failed in a particularly embarrassing spectacular way. I, I want to show you this real quick clip. I think that we have it, hopefully. Do we have that, that video clip? No? Yes? Apparently not. Maybe? <laughs> nope? Okay, we don't have it. Um, well, what I was going to show you is, I, I have this student. Um, he, he just graduated, God bless him. 
Um, but his freshman year at college, he thought it would be a, a fun idea to do um, the helicopter challenge. Uh, do you know what that is? Anybody know what that is? <laughs> helicopter challenge on an escalator at the mall. So kind of lay flat on the railing of the escalator and it kind of spins you around like this. Now, I know what some of you are thinking right now. Some of the Peters in the crowd right now are thinking, don't even think about it, okay? Um, he, he sat on top of the railing of the escalator at the mall thinking he was going to do this helicopter thing. And the poor guy was just, just a little bit overweight, ended up smashing the entire... Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, I got his permission to show that. I got his permission to show that. About, about 90,000 views on, on YouTube. And again, I know what some of you are thinking, and stop it right now. Don't even think about it. Cost him thousands of dollars, that one fail. Cost him thousands. So when's the last... Now, Maybe you haven't failed in, in such a spectacular way that you get turned into an internet meme, okay? But, but when's the last time you failed? When's the last time you failed? When's the, last time, when's the last time in your life that you just fell flat on your face? When's the last time in your life that you, that you let people down? When's the last time that you let yourself down? When's the last time you failed? Now, some of us, some of us, we actually live in those moments. We live in those moments, and we can't overcome them to such an extent that it's not so much that we failed, it's that we actually ourselves become a failure, right? Like we come to be defined by the ways that we fail. That must have been how Peter felt this morning. Now, I didn't even read the entire story. See, Peter, in, in the part of the text that I didn't read, Peter is with Jesus when he's arrested, okay? They're in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Peter is with Jesus when he's arrested. And Peter actually is carrying a sword with him. And this, this moment couldn't have happened in real life the way it must have happened in Peter's mind. Because Peter takes out this sword. He's like, I'm the rock, right? I'm the guy that walked on water. I'm going to defend Jesus right here, right now. And he takes out this sword, and he, he goes for one of the soldiers, and he actually misses. He whiffs, okay? And he, he just cuts off a tip of the soldier's ear. And Jesus basically says, put your sword away, dummy. Okay? He who lives by the sword is going to die by the sword. And now Peter is, is following along at a distance. Jesus is arrested. He's sitting there warming himself by a fire. And this servant girl notices him. Now this servant girl probably is only about 12 or 13 years old. Okay, And Peter is this big burly fisherman. Okay, And this 12-year-old girl, she sees Peter and she's like, you're one of them. And Peter is so intimidated by this 12-year-old girl. He's so given into his fear. He's so given into his fear that he actually denies his best friend. An hour later, a man sees, Jesus, sees Peter, again, warming himself by the fire, and the man says, no, no, you're one of them. And Peter says, I don't even know, who is this Jesus? I've never even heard of him. He denies that he even knows Jesus. A third time, another man at the fire says, no, 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 you're a Galilean. Now, how would he know that, that he was a Galilean? Well, actually, Galileans spoke with a drawl. I'm not kidding. They spoke with kind of a drawl. You could tell that the person was from Galilee based on the way they talked. He says, no, you're a Galilean. I've heard you talk. And Peter's like, no, I'm not. He denies Jesus the third time, and then he hears the crow. He hears the rooster crow. And in that moment, he's so broken by his failure that all he can do is weep bitterly. Now, I don't know if any of us can fully appreciate what Peter must have been feeling in that moment. But I do know that each one of us knows what it's like to fail. And not just accidentally fail, but willfully, intentionally to fail. To disregard or to disobey what we know is right. To crumble under pressure. To be cruel. To be unloving. To act as if, to act as if we don't know Jesus when we're out in the world. You ever have one of those moments? Can I confess to you, that was me my entire freshman and sophomore year of high school. 
Because knowing Jesus publicly, claiming to know Jesus publicly, was just too uncomfortable to me. And so I craved into my, I caved into my fears, I caved into my anxieties, and I looked, act, talk, and, 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 and thought just like everybody else in my school, everybody else, in, everyone else in my life. And I acted as if I didn't even know this man. You ever been in one of those moments? Some of you are right now. For every single one of us, there's this gap. There's a gap between who we are, who we know we are in our failures, and who we know God wants us to be. Right? There's this gap. We know that God wants us to be this person, but we know we're right here. And this gap, this gap is our failure. This gap represents all the many ways that we fail. And now when I fail, when I fail, I typically respond in one of two ways. This is just me, but I think that a lot of you could probably identify with this. When I fail, I typically respond in one of two ways. And both of these ways are non-Christian ways of responding to failure. The first way that I sometimes respond to failure is that um, I deny responsibility. I just deny responsibility. I respond to my own failure by pointing. Well, it's not my own fault. If you, un- if you only understood, right? It's, I'm a victim of my circumstances. Or it's somebody else's fault. Or what I sometimes do is I try to keep it under wraps, right? Because I got I to gotta protect my reputation. I got to protect who I am. I got to protect the way that people see me. And so in the process, what I do is I try to, I try to carefully protect my image and deny all the different ways that I fail. I want to teach you a, a, a phrase here this morning. It's a Latin phrase. Um, I think it's going to be up on the screen. If you put it, there it is. Here's how it's pronounced. Esse quam videri. Say that with me. Esse quam videri. Say it again. Esse quam videri. Okay, so this, this is an ancient phrase. It's an ancient Latin phrase. And it was by a, a Latin writer. His name was Cicero. And what it means is to be, not to seem. To be, not to seem. There you go. And Cicero, in his own day, he says, the problem in my day, this is him writing over 2,000 years ago. He says, the problem in my day is that everyone is interested in seeming a certain way, but not actually being authentic. And he says, this is a call to authenticity. This is a call to honesty, to be, not just to seem. Esse quam videri. Say it again. Esse quam videri. To be not just to seem. And guys, I got to tell you, that's a problem in our own world today, isn't it? That's a problem in our own culture today, that we're so interested in appearing a certain way, seeming a certain way, protecting our reputation, protecting our image, putting, projecting ourselves out to the world like this is who I really am, that we're not really true to ourselves, we're not really authentic, we're not really honest about all the different ways that we fail, about all the different ways that we fall short. To be, not to seem. To be, not to seem. When you fail, and you do, and I do, and all of us do, every day, when you fail, we've been called to honesty. We've been called to authenticity. We've been called to own it. Not to pass the blame to someone else or to something else. The second way that I typically respond to failure and again, some of you are going to be with me on this, is I'll respond, you know, I'll just do better next time. I'll just do better next time. God, I know that I screwed up. I know that I messed up. I know that I failed. I'm sorry about that. I truly am. And God, you know what? I'm going to do better. Tomorrow I'm going to do better. I promise. I promise. I'm not going to mess up again. Now, what's the problem with that, though? It's a lie. Because I am going to mess up again, over and over and over and over again. We think that the solution when we fail is just to, to buckle down and just to do better. But here's the thing. 
The Christian life, I'm just going to level with you. This, this, is, this is one of the most important things that you could learn about the Christian life, okay? The Christian life is resting in the work that Jesus did on our behalf on the cross. Jesus died on the cross because I am incapable of working to overcome my own failure, of working to overcome my own sin. And so when I fail, when I screw up, and when I say in the midst of that, I'm just going to do better, I'm just going to work harder, what I'm actually doing is denying the work that Jesus has already done for me on the cross. I can't, of my own power, of my own will, I can't just do better. But when I tell myself that, what that leads to is burnout. It leads to discouragement. And it leads to this constant cycle of failure. Well, tomorrow I'm going to screw up again, but I guess I'll just do better then. And I'll just do better the next day. And it never really works. Can you show that next picture? There you go. So I, I found an interesting little historical nugget when I was uh, working on this message. Um, of course, the picture on the left is what? What is that? It's a weather vane, right? Rooster on top of a weather vane. The picture on the right is actually a rooster on top of a church. Um, and then on the, on the left side, you see a cross on top of um, another steeple of the same church. And this actually goes back to the 6th century. In the 6th century, uh, the Pope at that time declared that churches should have a rooster placed on one of their steeples. And this became a, a tradition within the church then. That every church would have actually a rooster on the top of it. Which seems really bizarre, right? It seems really strange. Why? Why would you have a rooster on top of a church? I mean, after all, looking at this story, the rooster is a representative of failure. Like a rooster is a reminder of failure. It's a, it's a reminder of just in that moment how Peter failed Jesus. Why would you put one on the top of a church? But when I actually thought about it, I thought, well, that's brilliant. That's genius. Because picture it. Every time you're walking to church then, and from a distance, you see the church. And you look up at the top of the church and you see two pictures, two symbols. <clears throat> you see a cross and you see a rooster. The rooster is a wake-up call, guys. It's a wake-up call. And some of you need a wake-up call. It's a reminder. It's a reminder of the fact that we failed. And we fail time and time and time again. We fail our Lord. Sometimes we even deny that we know him. And that rooster is a reminder to us. But that rooster is also a reminder that when we fail, when we fail, all that we can do and the best that we can do is to run to the cross. Not walk to the cross, run to the cross. Because it's only at the cross where I will find the ultimate solution, the ultimate resolution to all the many different ways that I fail every single day. My failure, my failure is a call to Jesus. My failure is a call for me to run to the cross. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, we love you. And uh, we pray that you would that you would help us, Lord, through your power to recognize that our failure is not the end of the road. but that there is hope in our failure. We don't have to be defined by it. We don't have to be owned by it. Yes, Lord, we're brokenhearted and we, 
we understand from Peter that the, the inclination to weep bitterly when we fail, Lord. But Lord, we rejoice that in the cross, our failures can be finally done away with. We rejoice, Lord, that it's not our power, but it's your power. Lord, I pray for these students that they wouldn't be content just to seem, but actually to be authentic, to be honest, to own their failures, to recognize them, to confess them, to repent of them. Lord, I also pray for these students that they would run to the cross. Every time we fail, Lord, bring us back to the cross. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.